Hello Saints, for those with the eyes to see, I show you how close our gathering really is unto our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, we know according to prophecy that the nation of Israel will have a place, a temple, during the Daniel's 70th week tribulation. Now today I saw an article that really opened my eyes to what's really going on right now, connecting this time, this time period we're in right now to this prophecy of the third temple being built. Now we also know that once the dispensation of grace ends, our dispensation, salvation by faith alone, God will then move back to the dispensation under law, which is the faith plus works. The, the following dispensation after ours will be the dispensation of the kingdom. Now, but the foundation of that dispensation is the same as it was during in the Old Testament and the four gospels. The Mosaic law was in place and it's coming back, folks. And we know this after we're gone. Now consider the video I just uploaded called 923, what happens on September 23rd, 2017. Then apply this video also to that information. And we end up with an eye-opening situation taking place here uh, right now as I speak. And also consider this, from September 5th through the 11th uh, next month, the Muslims, the Christians, and the Jewish leaders are planning to open an interfaith place of worship in Jerusalem for one week in September. From Jerusalem 5 through the 11th, a Jerusalem structure currently known as the Alpert Youth Music Center will become the Amen, A-M-E-N, a place of worship for the three, this is what they call the three Abrahamic uh, faiths, you know, a passion for Jerusalem in which they will coexist temporarily under the wings of the Almighty. Now we know that the Muslim God is not our God, okay? Their father is not our father, period. The only God that exists is the God of gods and that is our God and it is the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, okay, who came and died and was buried and rose again on the third day for us. There's only one God, my friends. And this worship center is being created as part of an annual uh, blessing festival, which is part of the Jerusalem's Season of Culture initiative, okay? Now, we can see here, the seed of the Antichrist, one world religion is taking shape. And it's amazing just how many things are going on right now and it, that seem to be taking prophetic shape, if you will. Okay. Now, God's Word tells us that during Daniel's 70th week, after the dispensation of grace ends and the dispensation of the kingdom begins, you can't have two dispensations running at the same time, folks, because you can't have two methods of salvation running at the same time either. And that's more reason. It, it just wouldn't make sense. You can't have one group getting saved by faith alone and another group getting saved through faith plus works, having to endure until the end and so on. All right? this is, that, that's just one reason why the rapture has to take place first to end our dispensation and begin the nation of Israel's dispensation all over again, <coughs> running through the seven years for Daniel's people. Now, let's look at some scripture concerning the third temple first, okay? Then I want to share with you uh, some news and uh, that I saw today concerning how close we really are to building that third temple. In Daniel 9.27, And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week he shall cause a sacrifice and the oblation to cease, and for the over overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate, desolate, even until the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. In Matthew 24.15, when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. In Revelation chapter 11, uh, yeah, 11. And there was given to me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. But the court, which is without the temple, leave out, and measure it not. For it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot for forty and two months. Daniel chapter 9, uh, verse 24. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people. Who is thy people here? The Jews, the nation of Israel. And upon thy holy city, 
which is Jerusalem, to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. Know therefore and understand that from going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks and threescore and two weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. And after threescore and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off for not for himself. And the people of the Prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary and the end thereof shall be with a flood. And unto the end of the war desolations are determined and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease and for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate even unto the consummation and that determined shall be poured out uh, poured upon the desolate second thessalonians 2 3 and 4 let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. That's the apostasy that will take place when God pours out the delusion and forces them to believe in the Antichrist during the first part of Daniel's 70th week. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he, as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. In Revelation 1, 3, Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Now, this first picture I want to show you, okay? Uh, Rabbi Baruch Kahan, 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 I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce it, K-A-H-A-N-E, shown here offering the Omer, the barley sacrifice to God, in the heart of the old city of Jerusalem has been appointed as high priest by the nascent Sanhedrin. This is a significant step which was recently taken towards reinstating the temple service when the nascent Sanhedrin selected Rabbi Baruch Kahin as the next Kohen Gadol, the high priest. The selection was made as a precaution for Yom Kippur. Now, if the political conditions should change, allowing the Jews access to the Temple Mount, they will be required by Torah law to bring the sacrifices. Rabbi Kahin is confident that if that should happen, Temple service could begin in less than one week. Now, Rabbi Kahin is a prominent scholar, knowledgeable in the complicated laws pertaining to the subject of the Temple service. He's part of the Halakha Barua Institute, established by Rabbi Avraham Isaac Hakohen Cook, <laughs> the, the the first chief rabbi of Israel, which deals with the elucidation of Jewish law from its Talmudic sources, the oral law and commentaries, and he has he's played a prominent role in the reenactments of the temple services performed to date. Now this year has already seen much temple-oriented activity. The Temple Institute has created a registry of Kohanim, established a school for educating men of the priestly class in the details of the temple service, and performed reenactments on all the holidays, including the especially significant Passover sacrifice. Now, this second picture here, is the Kohanim carrying the lambs in a reenactment of the temple Passover sacrifice. Rabbi Hillel Wise, spokesman for the nascent Sanhedrin, explained to Breaking Israel News the necessity for choosing a high priest even in the absence of a temple. Now here he says, quote, We do not need a miraculous occurrence like the sudden appearance of a temple descending from heaven onto the Temple Mount to make this decision relevant, explained Rabbi Wise. The only obstacle preventing the temple service today is the political issue. If that should suddenly change, as it very well could, we would be required to begin the temple service immediately. It is therefore necessary that we have a candidate prepared to fill the role 
of the high priest, especially now that we have the Kohanim prepared to serve in the temple. Now this Rabbi Yisrael, Yisrael Ariel, founder and the head of the Temple Institute, is a member of the Sanhedrin but did not rule in this decision. He told Breaking News Israel that it was necessary for the Sanhedrin to choose a Kohen Gadol. Quote, this is certainly something we should do now as religious Jews, choosing a high priest and all the preparations for the temple service are mitzvot, the commandments that are inc incumbent upon us according to the Torah, said Rabbi Ariel. Quote, it is not a matter of opinion. It is written explicitly in the Torah and just like any of the other mitzvot written in the Torah, we have to choose a Kohan Godel and make all the preparations regardless of whether there is a temple standing right now. Now, do you agree the Jewish people have a biblical right to Jerusalem? Well, Rabbi Kohan was reluctant to discuss the Sanhedrin's decision. Quote, this may not be the time to choose a Kohan Godel. There is no sacrifices required. End quote. He said to Breaking Israel News. However, he added that that could change overnight. In any case, it's clear that we need to be prepared to prepare the priests to have everything ready. Now, when I asked how long it would take to begin sacrifices if it suddenly became permissible, he considered carefully before answering, and he said if the government decided to permit it, it would only take a few weeks to make preparations, even uh, to do the Yom Kippur service, he said. The structures can be temporary and prepared almost overnight. The biggest obstacle is educating the Kohanim, which we are taking care of already. Once the priests are thoroughly educated, choosing a Kohen Godal is and teaching him what he needs to know for the Yom Kippur service is relatively simple and will take one week. The temple service performed by the Kohen Godal is very demanding, but for an educated Kohen, it is not overly difficult to learn the service as the Kohen Godel. Now this third picture is the altar built by the Temple Institute to be used in service in the rebuilt the third Jewish temple. Okay. Now Rabbi Wise explained the importance of advancing temple initiatives even when it seems that reinstituting the temple service is not a matter of urgency. Quote, there are many Torah laws that are not sacrifices or temple services, but are nonetheless dependent on the temple and Kohanim. We recently reenacted the Omer wave offering, which has ramifications for when Israel can eat the current wheat harvest. In addition, we also reenacted the giving of the shoulder to cheeks and stomach of an ox to the priest. <clears throat> and this shall be the Kohanim's uh, due from the people for from them that you know they offer a sacrifice whether it be an ox or a sheep that they shall give unto the Kohan the shoulder the two cheeks and the maw in Deuteronomy 18:3 you can see that quote this is not only part of the sacrifice but it also an issue of kashrut kosher laws which we should be doing today explain rabbi wise instead it is treated in a rather shabby symbolic manner while it seems unlikely that the political climate could shift within a few weeks to the extent necessary for the Jews to establish an altar and begin preparing sacrifices on the mount in time for Yom Kippur, the world can rest assured that as these moments uh, that change should occur, the Jewish people are prepared. Now for those of you with eyes to see, take a good look. And for those of you with the ears to hear, listen closely. Our time is coming to an end, saints. Again, if you haven't seen the September 23rd, 2017 video I just put up yesterday or the day before, watch it. Take a, a good look at what's coming for the nation of Israel just a year from now. Then add to that the information I've just shared to you here in this video. Add the two together and it spells out imminency, okay? Saints, it's time to shift gears in your witnessing strategies. It's time to really get motivated get moving, plant as many seeds of salvation as you possibly can in the little time we have left. 
planting seeds of salvation does not involve getting into arguments with people or whether or not God exists. Okay, you don't need to be arguing about that. Planting seeds of salvation doesn't involve arguing over when the rapture is going to take place either. Planting seeds of salvation is simply telling another person who Jesus Christ is, what Jesus Christ did for them, and how to get saved according to 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Then you move on to the next. Don't get bogged down with all the world's methods of rejection. Okay, don't fall for it. Don't get don't feed into it one bit. Plant the seed and move on. That's it. And also be in prayer more now than ever before. And keep your armor on at all times. The, the battle is about to heat up like you've never seen, saints. They're already coming at us to control the internet. And the first thing they're going to control is the name of Jesus Christ. And you know it. So, grace and peace in Christ Jesus be with all of you. I can't wait to meet you guys at our wonderful gathering very soon, very soon. And I'll see you on my next video.